Mukono Zonal Agricultural Research and Development Institute, Mukono Zardi, is one of the nine public zonal agricultural research and development institutes, Zardis, which were established through the NARS Act of 2005. The institute is responsible for carrying out applied and adaptive research on the Lake Victoria Crescent Agroecological Zone. The semi-autonomous institution, which evolved from a DFI, covers 21 districts of central Uganda including Mubende, Mtiana, Luero, Chankwanzi, Mukono, Kayunga, Nakasongola, Nakaseke, Masaka, Kalangala, Buikwe, Kalungu, Luengo, Mpiji, Kampala, Bukoman Simbi, Gomba, Butambala, Bufuma, Wakiso, and Chiboga. Its dedicated staff develop, adapt, and effectively disseminate appropriate agricultural research technologies in the Lake Victoria Crescent Agroecological Zone in successive projects. At Mukono Zadi, we operate around three programs. The first program is the Crop Improvement Program and Natural Resources. The second program is the Animal Resources Program, where we do work on um, livestock and uh, fisheries, mainly aquaculture. The third program is uh, the Technology Dissemination and Outreach Program, where we focus on getting what we have developed out to the end users. Now under the crops program we are focusing on horticulture, we are doing um, work on uh, coffee banana systems and we are doing work around uh, peri-urban farmers generally. And uh, under the livestock um, section we are working on cost-effective feeding for uh, livestock. Among the current programs is enhancing crop productivity and marketing it in urban and peri-urban areas in the districts of Masaka, Kampala and Wakiso. The scheme carried out with partners like NACRI, NAR and local governments generated its first information on the dynamics of crop production and marketing before validating and recommending appropriate agricultural production and marketing practices to increase food security and income in new AP areas of the zone. This meant building the capacity of urban and peri-urban producers who also marketed their products. We have uh, farmers whom we've been able to train and they have taken on what we have told them to do and some of them actually take it to another level and they give us reports. There are some who are, who are doing it commercially, just doing farming in the backyard, but they sell to their neighbors. For instance, in Masaka town, we, we, we know of uh, farmers who someone can just have like a food tower but sells the vegetables, you, you find the neighbors coming to them and maybe buying uh, vegetables in bundles, maybe a thousand, five hundred, and they make income from it. Maybe not so much, but at least uh, somehow on a regular basis. Major problem has been declining soil fertility. We are carrying out trials to get a recommendation for both organic and inorganic fertilizers for the bananas. We are also looking at the weevils and the nematodes in bananas. For some other commodities like coffee, we still also multiply the planting materials for coffee and at the moment we are focusing on the coffee wilt resistant lines and these are the KR lines, they are seven lines. So we have a mother garden and uh, we are multiplying mainly clonal cuttings which we are availing to our stakeholders. The horticulture section is divided into the fruit and vegetable subunits. Here, the focus is on the production of improved fruit tree seedlings of oranges, mangoes, poppers and passion fruit. I remember when the project had just started, they brought different varieties from different countries which were imported. But you will find that when you look at mangoes, 
mangoes there were very many varieties which were introduced but what we have achieved we have evaluated them and we've come with the some which are adapting to our environment mostly this lake victoria presented zone where we are mandated to work the section is also responsible for promotion of exotic and indigenous vegetables suitable in the zone. The multiplication, dissemination and promotion of improved fruit trees like Tommy Arkins and Apple Mango are also available for local cultivators. Many varieties were brought in, but there are some which are now doing well, like a Pavin, Tommy Atkins, Kent and a Zeret. The section has ongoing research activities on indigenous vegetables, collaboration with Makerere University Plant Genetic Resource Center and NACRI, that is Nakati, Solanum Ethopicum, Jobio, Cleum Gainandri, and Buga, Amarathas Lividus. These crops require small gardening technologies which exist in several forms, including pots, polythene bags, backyard gardening, and home gardens. The most common gardening technology is the use of home gardens and backyard gardens. We are evaluating different small gardening technologies and these are mainly focusing on the urban and peri-urban farmers because they don't have very big pieces of land. So we are trying to see what, how can we help them to do agriculture within the small spaces that they have and among these we have the among the small gardening technologies we have the food tower the box gardens the sack gardens and the buckets so the selected farmers who are urged to form cooperative groups for smart cohesion were trained in seeds multiplication and seed certification procedures as well as quality seed production before being linked through lucrative contracts to seed companies as perennial suppliers. Invasi ni ndi ilwa. Ensigo ya azu ya jitu sumbuwa nyo kufuna. Echilegeza ndi kukatali. Yaliko ontono katinitula wawo mkisa ogu kola ojuguli mensi geyo nga tujitu munda nga ansigo. Kachabamu zadi ni batu somesa kunime ntu ufeye ensigo weyandi bade. Elani batu igiriza Nabutia, but Sobola, Okuji, Oji, 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 Sengeja, Neva, Yamutindo, Oksorofuna, Katala, Komulembe, Tebako Moko, Abamzadi, Bat Yunga, Kubutari, Nesuva Nok Sainiga, Indagano, Nagamukuma Company, Agakola Kuyensugum, Uganda, Nga, Nga, Simiro, City Company, Irokova, Mumia, Mumakawa, Bidi, Kumine Satu. Tubadde <laughs> Kwanga tuwali tuzirima, nga tulima kuza kuli yako. Mtula kubuza na kubuza ndi yoli memfa. Kukenda kufuna mochi. Nenu chizula nga batu ya mba, netu sobulo kwanga tuzirima mbunji. Tusobulo kuzi supply inga zi woteli mchibuge masaka. Nze, wenatani kilo kuli mensi genu. Na hii sirunda nkoku. Na hii, nafuna mu kakasente. Nenitani kuku nunde nkoku. Atebo nunde nkoku. Nenifuna mu maniwa. Alikilize nsi genu. Nembanga and Sugon Tekat in Tekamuchi to Nontekam Manua, attendance to go in Yen Jen Simba, attend the Manchu Kozeshi, the Manchu Pungu. Kaneman and Sugo Yukumpi of Kozemachi, Magova. Yakunya Mukulima Nakati, Najamuan Bizino, Tandikan and Bizibidi, went to Nenunda, sent to Zenzijamu Nakati, Mongole Mary and Biz, Zenzijamu Buka, Mongole Monacole Rechi Umbachi in the past, we, we've worked so much with rural farmers as researchers when we are you know, sampling to do research, but we realized that we've been ignoring the farmers in the urban and peri-urban areas.
for the case of Uganda, the most urbanized districts are Kampala, Wakiso, and others around like Mukono. We select farmers in those districts with the help of the, the district officials whom we are working with and we establish demonstrations at their homes in their backyards and uh, they can be able to train or tell their fellow farmers what's happening. We started this project with the hope of helping them out to see that agriculture moves forward even in the urban and pre-urban areas. Muzardi is also carrying out a project on enhancing dairy and poultry productivity and marketing in urban and peri-urban areas of Lake Victoria Crescent Agroecological Zone. The section has five subunits. One of them is the Dairy Cattle Unit on Semi-Zero Grazing Management System. The unit is basically for adaptive research training and demonstration of the recommended management skills suitable for the zone. Due to limited grazing areas, the breeds kept are mainly dairy breeds like the Frisian and Jersey composite breed as well as the Nganda or local cattle well adapted to the area. The advantage of this local Nganda gene is to other animals, for them they are resistant, they can outstand any condition. Now like here, if it is a dry season, diseases, for them they are resistant and there is no need that you can put in much, more so in the veterinary drugs and the other stuffs. So for them they can at least stand the diseases, they can stand the harsh conditions. Uh, we have been able to guide our farmers, more especially the peri-urban farmers, in the use of, 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 of their small plots in order to come up with tangible results, more especially in, in, in peri-urban and urban areas. because. Most of our areas that we are, we are covering in the Lake Victoria Agroecological Zone are situated in towns and very urban areas. We are looking at the Nganda gene as the only pure breed of Nganda which we are having here and it is the only breed which you can get pure as a local Nganda in the whole of Uganda. We realize that the feeding takes around 70% in food costs. So we are trying to do a research to find out which crop residues of the many crop residues that are in the peri urban can produce highest milk yield. In this case, we shall address the, both the economic and the nutritional challenges that our farmers are facing. Poultry under the project of improving the productivity of indigenous chicken through selection preservation and supplementary feeding. We also have a project which deal with the, which deals with the using diatomaceous earth. This diatomaceous earth, first of all, it is organic, so it goes into the human nutrition. It is it is very good and it is presumed that it increases weight gain and egg productivity in the chicken. So in this case, we are addressing both the nutritional and uh, bringing money to the farmers in this research. Uh, we have been able to distribute uh, good breeds to our farmers and we have been able to guide them on how to go about any breeding and how to overcome problems associated with the diseases outbreak. The piggery is purely under intensive management system and the breed red is Cambro, a composite breed of the species introduced into the country back in 2004. We are multiplying the Cambro breed for the farmers. So because this, the demand for this type of breed is very high, farmers come here to buy the piglets. This one has a high, very prolific, produces very many piglets per, 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 per farrowing and grows very fast. Most of the butchers demand for this particular kind of breed because it mixes the meat and then the fat it does not produce a very big fat. So that's why this breed is on very high demand. Pastures management for animal feeding and training purpose is another. Pastures including Glyricidia, Stylo, Chloris and Caliandra are used for fodder, fencing and nitrogen fixation into the soil are used by the livestock unit and for training purposes. 
Robert Alex Isabiri is looking at the status of crop residue usage in organic urban dairy feeding so as to increase milk productivity through proportionate optimization. He and his team are also building the capacity of urban and peri-urban producers in good agricultural and marketing practices. We are looking at how we can utilize crop residues, for example, banana peels, white peels, so as to feed their animals and ensure maximum milk yield. And also we incorporate in what we call agroindustrial byproducts. But when it comes to this dry season, the peri urban farmers have a very big problem, especially when it comes to getting feeds for their animals. This is the biggest constraint for the peri urban farmers. So this project in particular is playing a very big role in that it's introducing the farmers to how to use the crop residues in the dairy animal. The institute is also carrying out a project on utilization of improved seed to boost tilapia or Orechromis niloticus production in the Lake Victoria Crescent Agroecological Zone. The project is implemented in the zonal districts of Loengo and Mukono and is carried out in partnership with Makerere University, Nafiri Kajansi and Zonal NADS. The major project objective is to improve farmers' access to quality tilapia fry through selection of high-performance breeders drawn from the wild species found in the surrounding fresh water bodies that is Lakes Victoria, Choga and Nabugabo. For a long time, fish has been the, one of the first three highest foreign exchange earners for Uganda. Most of that fish came from the lake. We have noticed that uh, that fish has reached near maximum. There's not too much that they can cut from there. As you have heard, factories closing because uh, they don't have uh, the raw material fish. To, we have availed uh, an opportunity for farmers to get uh, high-grade fish uh, seed. And this, this is not just ordinary seed because uh, until recently, uh, we were not, uh, there weren't too many places that were able to produce uh, sex reversed all male tilapia uh, seed. And that is desirable because, of course, males grow faster than females and they grow bigger, uh, they achieve a higher weight in a shorter period of time. So, um, we, we, we hope that uh, this 100,000, 150,000 fish that we are sending out, which are sex reversed and well done, they should be able to improve the returns uh, for the farmers when they stock them. The agroforestry section and ecotourism section comprises of the agroforestry demonstrations, nursery and ecotourism site. The objective of the section is to produce seedlings for commercial purposes and for replenishing the forest in the institute as well as for training and recreation. We have an eco site that has a number of indigenous trees and also the exotic trees like pine, araucalia, shock trees. But mostly what we want with this eco site is the preservation and conservation of our indigenous trees like the mivule, musizi, prunus africana. Apart from the woodlots that boast, among others, the eucalyptus species, they have improved fruit trees like apples and mangoes. Factors being evaluated include flowering and yield, time of fruiting, the number of fruits, size, diseases and pest resistance, resistance to drought, smoothness of the fruit, the taste, nutritional value, moisture and sweetness. We have a fruit orchard that has apple trees with, a, with different varieties, that is Golden Dosage, we have Anna, we have James Grieve, we have Gloucester, we have Dalmena and uh, Tabanana. These varieties have been tested and a few of them have been approved by the National and these are being disseminated to the farmers out there. Farmers in the zone are picking up some of the demonstrated technologies like the Kaliandra edge rows, especially in managing soil fertility. The Information and Communication Technology section comprises of the Public Relations Unit, Information Resource Center and the Information Technology Units. Here, they develop, organize and disseminate research information and technology outputs to intended end users in the zone and beyond. 
We also use exhibitions and agriculture shows to disseminate what we have because we are a research institute and a narrow. In addition to that, we also have the school outreach program which goes out to the different districts within our zone. And within this program, we train the pupils on how to best grow different crops. And then we, we, we make them do it in a competitive spirit. The Institute has been able to share information through their website on the internet, the broadcast and print media. They furnish newspaper articles and supplements in journals or magazines, year planners and newsletters, procures, to mention but a few. The Institute Resource Center comprises of stored information material like scientific and non-scientific books, journals, magazines, leaflets and audiovisual CDs. Mursaridi work and research technological innovations and reports are also stored in the IRC. When farmers lack access to information, they are trading in darkness. Many farmers are facing challenges in issues concerning knowledge access. And we came up with an idea of a resource center that could, that could serve farmers in our zone and especially being able to access knowledge materials on commodities that we are working on. We package these information materials in form of brochures, farmer guides, and farmers are able to access them. Muzardi also has a satellite station in Kanyamigo to cater for the needs of farmers who can't access the Mukono Head Station. Prominent are the cattle and piggery units. The institute boasts of an addition of new laboratories and office blocks that have helped to improve the working conditions and facilitate research activities. Now with the, the new facility of a laboratory in Kamenya Migo, we hope to begin doing soil analysis and also be able to assist farmers on identification of the diseases here still in these silo units, we train farmers around on how to make silage for feeding to their animals, whether pigs, goats, or whatever they rear. The Mukono Zonal Agricultural Research and Development Institute and Satellite Station is bent on being a center of agricultural excellence as it performs specific functions of understanding the farming systems, participatory identification of priority and market-oriented agricultural research that need sourcing, refining, adapting and disseminating appropriate agricultural technologies and innovations. We have planned to do 404 demonstrations of the main crops, of the main livestock technologies. We are going to be demonstrating beans, the new varieties that we have, we are going to be demonstrating maize varieties, we are going to be demonstrating uh, pastures, we are going to be demonstrating also how farmers should generally house and feed their animals. So all this, um, we believe, will help farmers to improve their productivity, which eventually translates into better incomes and uh, food security. We will avail our knowledge, ourselves, and our time to help you to make your fish farms and fish enterprises profitable. That's the critical part, because at the end of the day, we want to put money in your pocket. That's, that's all we are, we are all about. If we can manage to improve or increase the amount of money that goes in your pocket, as far as we are concerned, we'll be satisfied. We see Mozad in 10 years to be a center of excellence to our farmers in terms of guiding them and providing them with good breeds. The Institute continues to build capacity of staff in developing technologies, better infrastructure and equipment in a bid to build the capacity of farmers' adaptive research and technology transfer and also support farmers' linkage to markets.